All right. So this is the future of Nevis Outreach. Um, that's where we are for the next hour. And we'll do wrap up all in the same room. So um, next hour and a half, hanging out with Wyatt and I, talking a little bit about uh, dreaming big and where we would love to see Nevis Outreach go. Um, Wyatt, do you want to do a brief introduction for those people who might not know who you are? Uh Sure, I can do a brief introduction for anyone who may have seen me, uh, I don't know, Thursday night or Friday night, I have a slightly brighter wall behind me today. Uh, so I'm the Nevis Outreach uh, Board Vice Chair. I live in Jacksonville, Florida. Right now I am in Tampa, Florida. Um, hopefully going to go see the Rays and the Orioles play a game of baseball tomorrow, which would be great. And I am multitasking, of course, Lauren watching the Orioles game right now on my phone. Uh, anyway, um, but we, you know, as it says there, I'm the board vice chair in about a month or so, apparently, uh, there's a large good chance, I guess, I will be elevated to the board chair position. Um, and we have been dreaming big over the past couple of years. I helped lead a strategic planning effort um, about three years ago now. And it started to dream big. We've done a couple of those things, which we talked about Thursday night, and you can see at least one of them right in front of you right now. Um, we've done a rebranding, which is an awesome uh, thing. Hopefully everyone has had a chance to, to see it and loves it like we do. Um, and if you don't love it, uh, we're going to have a chance, you know, whether we end up with more people and we do breakout rooms or we just keep it together, we're going to have an open-ended discussion as part of this session. So that's going to be helpful as well. And I think that's good enough for now. Yeah, very good. Um, so just to kind of frame what is next, I chose these two pictures on the right because I feel like um, it's a little bit of an adventure and a little bit of a, a little bit of a competition race, um, a little bit of a challenge. So um, I, the dreams that were cast in the meeting that um, Wyatt talked about um, with the strategic planning effort, um, I mean, on paper, I I kind of laugh sometimes and say, okay, when are we hiring nine people? Because that's a lot. <laughs> um, and so uh, this will kind of answer those questions and um, guide us to what is next for Nevis Outreach. So we just kind of want to spend some time walking through the different parts of our mission, painting a picture of where we would like to go and uh, why we feel like that time is now. And then what does that look like as far as how you can be involved? So um, one of the things that we're dreaming about for the future is increased support and scholarships. Um, we are interested in uh, making sure that CMN families um, have supported every step of their journey. Um, throughout our sessions this week, you've heard mental health, mental health, mental health. We've been hearing it from the community for some time. We really want to see what does it look like to offer and enhan enhance mental health support. We feel like that might could come through online new parent support groups meeting regularly, um, perhaps an NCM peer support group, um, and see what other see what the appetite is for other support groups that could meet maybe quarterly, maybe twice of year, um, but that technology does exist. So what would that look like to really enhance our support services? Um, through the legacy of Paul Coleman and others, we do have some funds already available for a scholarship program um, that has been a goal for some time. And uh, we want to establish next steps in um, what does it look like for graduating seniors to have an opportunity to apply for a small scholarship through Nevis Outreach. Uh, we would really like to see that um, come to fruition and perhaps award our first scholarships at our next conference together in 2024. Um, we would also re still recognize the, ex um, the need for expanded education and training for physicians regarding CMN. Um, even just today in our uh, new parent support group, it came up that, you know, could we do more to reach out to OBGYNs or nurses or midwives who are affiliated with that kind of birth experience? The first five minutes of birth, the outcomes that happen in that room are 20 times more likely to predict postpartum depression, depending on how those first five minutes of birth go. And so um, those of us who have had um, experiences that were less than ideal understand um, the trajectory that that puts people on uh, under those statistics. So we just really want to try to do expanded education and training. We've done a really, really good job with our pediatric dermatologists, but we have a lot more specialties um, that we could entertain the idea of education and training for. 
And then um, enhanced organization-led meetups regionally, uh, geographically. We understand that we launched our regional group program um, after people asked for it at the 2018 conference. And, um, but we expected it to be run and run well on the shoulders of volunteers. And um, with the pandemic and the challenges that it brought, and um, just relaunching that post pandemic, we feel like it might be best supported um, by staff resources if possible. And then there's also been a demand for, um, I think once upon a time, some AWNs went on a trip together somewhere, maybe was it Vegas? I don't know, I think it's legend at this point, but it was Vegas, I think. And so- um, we, we can't tell you what happened at it because it was in yeah. Vegas, so we can't tell you anything about it. <laughs> That's right. So um, is there an opportunity to um, to bring some of that travel um, back where we could arrange um, those trips for people that are interested? Um, would Nevis moms be interested in some type of meetup or retreat? Um, and even our AWN young adult experiences. So maybe another trip to Vegas is in order. I'm not sure, but um, just just really enhance that community experience at every at every level and what does that look like individually in terms of support and then um i have this video clip here i hope it'll play without an ad but um it talks a lot about the, the the current work that is being done by the Coalition of Skin Diseases as it results to advocacy. Uh, Paul and I both are huge advocates and supporters of the work that's being done by the Coalition of Skin Diseases. It is a kind of an umbrella group that encompasses um, all skin disease organizations in the United States, and they bring us to the Hill twice a year um, to uh, do advocacy work. We had our first uh, congressional briefing on people, on the impacts of people living with skin disease. So I'm going to show a brief video about their work, but I want you to imagine for a moment, what if every person you saw in this video was a Nevis owner and what would that look like for us to have an experience like this on the Hill? So just paint that in your mind that all these people are your Nevis friends and let's, let's dream a little bit together. As a nurse, I can't tell you how important it is for you to come as a dermatology patient to tell your story on Capitol Hill so that you can make a difference for yourself and other patients like you. My sister, Samantha, who's currently 10, was recently diagnosed with alopecia. And I want to make sure that even though she might not be able to tell her story, I'm here to help her. It's important to come and make sure the people in power know your story so that you can make the change in the country. And that's what we're here to do. Congresswoman Ayana Presley here and proud alopecia. Uh, the power of storytelling is real. Each of you played a critical role in influencing the policy agenda in the nation's capital. You sharing your experience about access to care, your story with dealing with skin disease, those stories are so powerful. And as a doctor, I can share why they're powerful as someone who wants to heal you. But you as the patient who are suffering bring such influential power to that story. Rarely does Congress lead. What it does do, if it gets it right, is it responds to the voices of the people. And that is why we need you to raise your voice.
So that video is a promo video that we sent to um, all of our CSD constituents. And we do have um, a space for a constituent or two to join us um, on the Hill every year. This year, myself and Andrea Bischoff went uh, for our first ever uh, CSD sponsored Hill Day in April. And we'll do another one in September. Um, so I'm sorry, October. So if you're interested in joining the fall one, um, let me know. And with those same, um, with, along those same lines, we are uh, relaunching our advocacy committee um, in the fall, and uh, we are really excited about the opportunities that CSD has afforded us in the meantime as a smaller organization, but we do want to paint the picture, uh, cast the dream that we have should have the opportunity to host our own Hill Day and plan our own advocacy strategies um, as an organization sometime in the future. Um, Research is another area that we feel like whatever we could do, we could always triple it. <laughs> um, but research is moving at a really rapid rate, perhaps faster than ever. Uh, moving science forward will be will greatly benefit from a physician verified patient registry. Um, but I did list some of our most pressing research opportunities. If you didn't have a chance to uh, listen to our research panel um, this afternoon, um, it was absolutely fantastic. Uh, Dr. Hallrick, I was like taking pictures of her slides because it was um, new information for me too. Um, it was really incredible. Make sure you check that out in the recorded sessions um, on the video from our virtual conference. And of course, um, another central tenet of our mission is raising awareness. Um, in the last few months, our social media takeovers have been successful, but we have so much work to do um, in terms of raising general awareness. Uh, we would love the opportunity to explore larger media campaigns and outreach events just to bring um, the general population in um, to have some recognition and awareness of what CMN is. And that brings us to our See Beyond uh, Nevis Outreach Campaign. So I'm gonna turn it over to Wyatt and let him talk a little bit. Before you do that, can you go back to the research slide for a moment? Sure. Um, if, if it's easy enough to do anyway. Sure. One more, let's see. Okay, so um, can you talk a little bit about the NCM registry? I think some people may remember the past one that we had and oh, yeah. you know, there are reasons we don't have it, but what we're trying to do moving forward. Sure, so I can talk a little bit more about that. So the NCM registry that's highlighted here is a registry that's for patients with neurocutaneous melanosis that Dr. Yasmin Kaku um, started last year, maybe the year before, about 18 months ago, I think, because um, I think she already had it up at the last conference. Um, and then the NIH natural history study or the my part study is a new um, study that, that is funded by taxpayer dollars um, as a result of long term advocacy of Nevis outreach and other groups um, to uh, do a study in relation to populations that are at perhaps higher incidence rates for melanoma. So um, that is the natural history study. It is already live and open. Um, you can click on there and the, um, it'll take you to that page. You can enroll and the physicians will verify the data and um, give you access to um, that study where they plan to study CMN patients for the next 50 or so years. Um, and that's really exciting, but it but you do have to meet certain requirements um, to be a part of that study. You have your nevus has to be a, um, a large or giant nevus, so it has to have a certain projected size, um, and um, so that is a challenge and does leave some members of our community um, out of that study. So what we would like to do is build a parallel registry that asks the same questions as this NIH natural history study. And that way that data can be aggregated. So we don't have the cost of, um, we don't shoulder the full cost of what it would take to build out on a full registry that captures every patient, or if at some point the administration, because it's federally funded, um, we could have an administration change and things could be cut or 
um, things like that. So our NIH partners are working with us to build this parallel registry so that if something were to happen um, to the National Cancer Institute funding that's funding that part of it right now, um, we kind of have a fallback plan so that research can continue to move forward. So it's not necessarily a plan B, it's really a, it's a collective plan A, um, but we wanted to see what what they were willing, what questions they were going to ask. And they have been fantastic. Um, they had Maggie and I in a meeting probably a year ago. Um, they were only interested in melanoma outcomes at first. That was their only their only endpoint. And we added, no, we want to ask questions about mental health. We want to ask questions about itching. We want to ask questions about hair. We want to ask questions about, so we added like, I don't know, like probably a dozen additional input inputs that they put into the survey, um, but based on our feedback. So that's really cool to see this come together and know that we directly impacted that and our voices have been at the table. And um, not only that, but Dr. Carrie Coughlin, uh, I have noticed noted on here, the CMN Patient Registry Working Group. So Dr. Sargent from the NIH is part of that. Um, Dr. Carrie Coughlin was instrumental in having a, a fellow, uh, her name is Kim Strange, S-C-R-A-N-G-E, um, who is going to be our facilitator uh, fellow for the Patient Registry Project. And she's going to work a portion of her time on developing this parallel registry and host our working groups and keep us on track and kind of drive drive that forward. Um, we're also exploring additional funding opportunities through possibly PCORI, which is the patient-centered outcome outcomes in research instances, I think. I can't remember what the I stands for, but um, anyway, they provide funding for events where um, research is happening that that is patient centered. And I was able to get a meeting uh, with one of their program officers through a PEDRA meeting that I was invited to in May. And um, she's really excited about the potential for um, not only having Washington University support um, through this fellow, but the fact that our our Nevis Outreach Conference is going to be in St. Louis and that university is there. Uh, maybe we can build out a partnership that would be that would warrant PCORI funding. Um, that's kind of a lofty goal, but we're certainly going to work towards it. Um, and that would be incredible to have be able to have an experts meeting as part of that working group, potentially at our conference um, under Dr. Coughlin's direction and with assistance of uh, WashU. So we'll see. Um, it is kind of, um, but it just kind of speaks to the volumes of opportunities that we've had. And these partnerships are things that um, have been long in the works. Um, they're not something that's happened overnight. It has taken a couple good years of, um, of just being in the right rooms and talking to the right people over and over and over again uh, to make these things happen. So it's really an exciting time to see things that we started working on in 2019 and 2020, like finally coming to fruition. And we're not even there yet. We're just getting started. <laughs> so that brings us to see beyond. Sorry, that's great. All right. So, um, but let, before I talk about see beyond, let's talk about the conference. And again, I want to Mm -hmm. wrap us back around a little bit. Um, we talk about the pillars of Nevis Outreach or the three-legged stool, which is awareness, support, and research, okay? Well, if it's a stool, I would submit to you that the top of the stool or the thing that brings those three things together is our conference. A um, little background, I think most of you probably heard this by now, but I'll do it again anyway. Um, so in 1997, I was living in Tallahassee, Florida, and I was introduced um, by my doctor who I'd gone to see just to have a couple of the satellites removed off my forehead. And he said, you need to go see this family because they have the same condition. They have a child with the same condition as you. Um, like many of us, it was surprising. This is, you know, early internet days. Um, I went and visited their house, saw their probably one and a half year old son, and went home and called my mother and said, "This he looks just like my baby pictures. And my mom was like, nope, not believable, can't be. 
That was one of the founding families of Nevis Outreach. There were three families that founded it. I was asked to come to the 1998 uh, first conference in Orlando. Um, myself and Nate were there as the only adults. Um, I was two years into my career at that point, I guess. Um, but it was very, uh, I think, inspiring um, for parents, as I understand, to hear from me as, a, as an adult who had you know, gone through his teen years and into college and was now in a career and was successful. The fact is that, you know, we're now 25 years later, the organization's been around for 25 years, but our conference is still just that powerful, if not more so. Um, it is amazing to me that there were kids at that conference who were, you know, two and three years old, or maybe four, um, who are now friends of mine, uh, Whitney is, you know, a staff on Nevis Outreach and helped put this virtual conference together. She's one of those original ones. Uh, Matthew is on our board. He's one of those original kids. Uh, Megan Stewart is still involved in the organization. It's incredible. And this is our opportunity every year at the conference to be able to celebrate that. For new parents, which you see here in the picture, it is life-changing. I think some of you who've been understand that. Um, we want to expand that opportunity. I would love our 2024 conference to have 500 or more people. Uh, by the way, I do believe Marilee is on this uh, session. Marilee Vance is chairing that conference and already doing a kick butt, I'll use good English, uh, job in getting it all set up. We have a really robust opportunity. Um, we have a great facility, which we might talk about a little bit more later. Um, but we know it takes money to do that. And there are people, we're saying this is the international conference. We now have a membership program that you all have probably heard about. And we have members now from 36 countries on six continents. We're going to be asking if somebody wants to move to Antarctica just so we can get a seventh continent in place. Um, but we are truly an international organization. And our conferences are that opportunity for everyone to come together in a reunion, a family reunion, for lack of a better term. So for all of those pieces that I talked about, research, advocacy, awareness, for all of that comes together at the conference. What is the next 25 years of Nevis Outreach? Well, for the first time, at least to my knowledge, we are putting together a multi-year fundraising campaign called See Beyond. Um, Lauren, if you wanna jump to the next slide. And I'm gonna scare you all really quickly um, or inspire you, one of the two. So Nevis Outreach as an organization over the past few years, in a non-conference year, our budget was around $150,000. In a conference year, maybe it was $350,000, $400,000. Um, you can see here that we have a goal of raising $2.5 million over three years. Um, we're starting in this year, 2023, with a ramped up budget. Again, that's not quite double, but almost double what our previous non-conference year budgets would be. Um, as Lauren will note to you that in 2019, when she was hired, she was a single employee. We now have a staff of five-ish, yeah. um, you know, and, and some of them are fractional, so that, that's important. But we've been able to, you know, build up our, our financing capabilities and our marketing and awareness, some with volunteers, some with staff, the membership program. That's all led to the new logo and the new branding and the new website that's gonna be launched next month. And then it leads to the See Beyond campaign that will also be launched either next month or the beginning of September. Um, what I would encourage you to look at here, these are just the large buckets, quote unquote, but just take a look at conference. You know, we're, we're trying to raise $425,000 for next year's conference. Um, and then there's some seed money in there um, for the, you know, the every two years, but a goal of $500,000 for our conference, because we understand how, how game changing that is. Um, Lauren just talked to you about the research and the registry. That's going to take money. Um, and we want to be able to not just do what we've been doing the past years, which is 15, 20, maybe $25,000 to some research efforts. 
Can we do something more robust? What's the difference between funding 20,000 in research and 200,000, or dream really big, 2 million? Um, the advantage is that in case of research, for example, we have these opportunities to partner, which means that our cost is lower um, and the return on investment hopefully is greater. Um, we are gonna keep with a robust marketing and communications effort. We've got to keep doing that. Um, Lauren will tell you that our social media reach has just exploded over the last year or two. Um, and it keeps going up every month. And we're like, at some point it's going to level off, but it isn't yet. Um, that's our opportunity again. That's our support and that's our awareness. And it can lead to you know, more people understanding about the organization and understanding about CMN and what it means. Um, I will tell you the other part here, which are the couple bottom lines, um, scholarships, I would love to raise more money than what's here. Um, but, you know, we're, we're going to take baby steps. But um, Lauren mentioned and Lizzie Coleman, I think, is online. And this is in uh, started by Paul. And, and it's something that we really think is very important as our needless young adults are finding their way to college. Um, and we've got a whole cadre that are about to do that. Um, who again, who the kids who've been uh, growing up at our conferences for the last 10 to 15 years. Um, it's gonna be important that we think about the next 25 years and beyond of the organization. So that means as our budget builds, we have to be really smart about making sure we're keeping our reserves in an appropriate way. So given that we have set up a goal of having six months of budget in reserves, um, we have to build that. Mm -hmm. Also, and we navigated with it with a pandem through a pandemic and a yeah. conference. So mm -hmm. we maintained it. So I'm really proud of that. And, and then the endowment. That's an opportunity, again, to be thinking about the long term. Um, so I think all of these pieces fit really well together. I understand it's incredibly ambitious, but I do think we can do it. We do have some history in the past of finding grant opportunities that gave us several hundred thousand dollars a year. Um, Mavis Outreach has had million dollar years before. Like it's not, yeah. um, if you it's go back outreach. historically. Yeah. So it's not, we just want to get back to that level. Okay, let's go next slide. Okay, this is kind of how it breaks down. Yep. So... Uh, the numbers are wonderful, pie charts are even better. Um, and <laughs> we're looking um, as part of the, the materials that we're putting together for the Sea Beyond campaign right now, which again, hopefully will be ready in a matter of a couple of weeks. Um, we're gonna look to have it, it is already, and will continue to be really graphically infused. Um, it is an opportunity when we are going out and asking potential, I mean, we may be going to found, well, not maybe, we will be going to foundations um, that sometimes fund millions of dollars. And, you know, there are lots of us, I will submit one other piece. We've gone through some training um, on how to ask. And one of the things that was fascinating to me in our conversations, we kept talking about our Nevis outreach, our constituents. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, you know what? No, it's our community. And the reality is every single person in my sphere that is surrounding me is part of my community. Um, so I know there was some discussion on the previous session um, about, you know, when do you get stared at and, and people looking at you different? And of course, did I have that as a kid? Yes, do I still have it? Yeah. Do I notice it anymore? Not really. Um, and I'll tell you that today, I went to my friend's son's 10th birthday party with 10 10-year-olds. And I don't think a single one of them looked at me differently other than, oh, here's the old guy in the corner. Those, those kinds of things are the opportunity. All of those people, all of their parents who have only now met me one time are part of that community and are potentially people we can reach out to have them come into our Nevis Outreach family. Mm -hmm. Lauren, next slide. Sure. Which I think is the question. Um, I'll start this and then Lauren, you can jump in. Sure. So how can I or you or we be involved? There are, I will say, 
any money that is raised, anything that we do for Nevis Outreach, starting in January of 2023, so starting seven months ago, for the next three years counts to that campaign. So if you're an outreach angel and you give $5 a month, um, or if you're the person who wrote one check for $25, or you hosted a grassroots fundraiser, those things all are going to count in this. Now, there are any number of ways we will have guidance. There's little uh, little fine print there about it. Um, we would also submit that, you know, again, if we're thinking about the long-term legacy of the organization, maybe it's lifetime gifts. It's, um, you know, thinking about you, uh, thinking about needing this outreach in your estate plans, realizing that that hopefully does not bring money to the organization in the near term. Um, but again, I want to make sure Nevis Outreach is here in 2048 and frankly in 2098. So Lauren, you want to jump in? Yeah. So um I mean, and I feel like the sheet here articulates it very well. This is straight from our campaign paperwork. And it's not just a call to action, it really just is an invitation for individuals to become a particip active participants in creating positive change for our Nevis community. Um, and there's a my right of ways to do that. So um, we've already asked our board of directors um, to make their pledge. And um, at the time when we did this call for pledges, we had um, 10 board members <laughs> and um, our board um, collectively pledged $85,000. Um, of their own money towards this campaign over the next three years. And to me, when I can look 10 people in the eye and they pull out their checkbooks to that magnitude, um, it really speaks to how much they see the need for this. And this is not this is not fly by night um, plans on paper. This isn't something that Wyatt and I dreamt and wrote down in two days time, you know, last week. Um, this has been um, planned and strategized and really um, considered in a way that what would it take to move our organization forward to, to ensure just that, that in 50 years, um, Maylee's bringing her grandkids to the conference. I mean, um, that's that's what I hope happens. And um, so what is it going to take today to move the needle forward on that? So um, that's, I, I just want uh, folks to realize that that's the level of commitment that we have from our leadership. Um, and um, in addition to that, I have... Um, as of through today at our grassroots fundraising session, another $55,000 in uh, fundraising goals from grassroots fundraisers. So um, I think that's really incredible. And um, I just feel like that sets the tone for this campaign. And we really are asking um, every person to just consider how they might be involved. So um, there is an opportunity to scan a QR code and make a pledge, but of course there will be more collateral coming. Um, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. We have been so fortunate to work with um, a full marketing team from, um, from Monkey This, and that's owned by long-term Nevis community owners, uh, Lou and Kirk Carr. And um, that group has been fantastic in helping us. They understand our community. So it's made perfect sense that they've helped us um, kind of craft this mission and, and uh, vision for this campaign. So we're really excited about the professional materials that will be coming out in the coming months. Um, but uh, Wyatt says our go date is September 1st, and he doesn't know it, but um, my go date is August 15th. So um, well, I know it now. That gives me that gives me two, <laughs> that gives me two months before our board retreat to really put in some work. And so um, when we're there together in person, um, we can uh, celebrate and just see the. Um, see the momentum that's already happening with the campaign. Um, other ways that you can be involved, um, if you're already an outreach angel, um, consider um, share. We launched a new initiative in our outreach angel uh, event this week, or this weekend yesterday. <laughs> that seems like a long time ago, but it was just yesterday, um, called uh, Each One Reach One. We're asking every outreach angel to see if they can find one other person that can become an outreach angel. Um, 
and help us double our number of outreach angels. We have about 85 right now contributing just under $5,000 a month. Um, if we could double that number and double the other number to get to 10,000 a month, that would make huge um, strides in reaching these goals and give us a very sustainable, forward thinking um, way to move forward. Also, um, we're looking for people to host a fundraiser in their community to support the CB on campaign. This is a three-year campaign, so I'm not asking to throw the barbecue next week, uh, but uh, what would it look like for you to, um, you know, in our grassroots fundraising session we had earlier, um, I uh, have put together a collection of resources for grassroots fundraising. And one of the things was um, photo albums of all the the um, grassroots fundraising events that um, I have photos of. So most of them since 2019, um, I have all of them on there. And uh, what's really cool about that is in every single one, um, they're all different. You know, Kyle Behammer is a biker, so he biked across Ohio. The Grafe family, they're in a motorcycle club, so they did a motorcycle ride in a car show. Um, the family in Alabama, the Talbots, they uh, own a aqua cable park. I've never heard of it before, but I went to Alabama and talked with them about it. And um, it's basically like a water ski they do like tricks and stuff. But anyway, they have an event at the end of the season where it's cold and uh, the people come in the water and do the tricks anyway, even though it's cold for charity. And um, Nevis Outreach benefited from that in 2021. Um, another family um, did a I'm thinking of the Dolchins that did that did Winnie's fundraiser when she was a year old. So she turned a year old. Um, they hadn't even really told their broader community about her CMN condition prior to that and uh, made a big splash on it on social media and raised eight thousand dollars in like two days uh, for celebrating their child's birthday. Um, it was incredible. She, you know, I don't think she didn't expect that at all. She she said, oh, I set the thermometer at, you know, a thousand dollars and hopefully we'll do something. And it was, it just went crazy. You never know. Um, and I just think that there's an opportunity for every single person. If, if everyone that's walked to the doors of any of this outreach conference at any point, past, present, or future, and has, well, I guess not future, but past or past or present and experience what happens at a Nevis conference and how you're impacted by this community for the rest of your life. Um, if every person that has had that experience would do one of these four things, um, our $2.5 million goal may not be big enough. Um, and I just think that um, coming alongside us in this way, yes, it's it's sometimes a challenge to put to make a plan and put down numbers and march towards a common goal. But I can't think of anybody that I'd rather link arms with than the people in this community. Um, our board um, is second to none. All my nonprofit friends are jealous. <laughs> Everyone that lives this life, uh, I have the best board board that I know of in my circle of nonprofit friends, and um, I'll let them all be jealous because they are fantastic and they care about this mission each and every day and they hold that banner high and they really have put a lot of energy and effort into um articulating the vision and this is just the next step in that vision we know where we want to go and this is our roadmap to get there so um, so we'll do lauren time. yes so i think we have 10 people online total um, okay. And if I just count you, me, and and Lily, that's seven. Okay. Um, just so I, think we can, I mean, if everyone is comfortable just doing it as one room, um, I think we could just do one room. I, I mean, if y'all want to do breakout rooms, we can. Um, but there's probably enough of us here, or you know, a small enough group that we can do it. Yeah, I think it's I think it's fine to um, stay together. Okay, so what we wanted to do is just open it up to you all to say, what have we missed? Is there something, um, for example, that this campaign should have? Is there something that the organization needs to be doing that we haven't thought about? Um, are there ideas that we haven't thought about in terms of fundraising? Are there things, do you wanna push back? You know, Do you wanna tell us that you don't like the new logo at all? Um, 
or or our goal is too ambitious and we need to be more realistic. Uh, just kind of want to open it up to any questions or comments. And I will say, because I'm now on my phone, it's hard for me to see everyone. So hopefully, Lauren or Lily, if people are raising their hand, we can see it. I can watch it. Okay. Any feedback at all? Say, if not, I'm going to start calling on people. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> I think it's awesome. I think it is ambitious. Um, but I say go for it. It's, it's worth it. Very excited. Yeah. Thank you, Lizzie. Rita, what do you think? I know you've kind of been on the call since the beginning. She's on our CB on committee, so she kind of has seen a lot of this um, from the beginning, but. Well, I love the new logo and I think it's really says it all and it's bright and it's cheerful and it's welcoming and um, my only comment about the entire conference is to teach Shona how to say Nevis. <laughs> so noted. She yes. is Canadian, so they do. I think they do say it different there. But I <laughs> yeah, I mean, there, there, I there is that it. geographic thing. Yes, but it, uh, yeah, we work, yeah. we work on that. <laughs> yeah. But no, the conference was very good and very well put together. And I just wanted to thank everybody for all the work that they did. It's a great job. And I can see it going beyond 50 some odd years and so on. <laughs> Thank you, Rita. So how about I call on Marilee if she's there? Um, because I'm curious if we were to get 600 or 700 or 800 people, could we do it? I'm starting my video. Yes, yes we see that. Of course we could do it. Oh my gosh. I like, I think about that and I get so stinking excited. Like, yeah. I don't know. And, if you guys and, 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 and is the pool big enough for the pool party? Um, I showed you pictures of the outdoor pool and that thing is not tiny. <laughs> and there's indoor and outdoor. Yep. Yep. And lots of mingling space inside outside that's even shaded so we're super pumped about it oh my gosh we could spend the entire conference outside because it is such a great space and Rita I might have to come to Florida and get and and get you but I might <laughs> yep yep that might work <laughs> I will need help that I know we can probably figure that out if I drive we can yeah. oh yeah that's yeah. right yeah, yeah, Wyatt might be a little closer. Maybe she can. He can meet you at the airport. <laughs> well, my friend Marissa at the last con after the last conference, Marissa Green was got to go to her first conference, I believe, and she missed the fact that I wasn't there. And she said she's going to bring me. So we'll see. <laughs> well, it's not the same without you there. I do have to say. Thank so, you. Yeah, yeah. You're I friendly. agree. Uh, I'll come get you, Rita, if I need to. Okay. Nobody else. <laughs> <laughs> we uh i mean i think that um there's as far as the hotel accommodations merrily do you remember how many how many rooms it is i can't remember oh gosh total i don't it's a, it's a, it's a really good hotel but we we have yeah. our room block is um pretty ambitious um, yeah. but you know, I will tell you all, uh, as someone who does this kind of thing, not in my day job, but in part of my day job, uh, in conference planning and, um, Marilee and Lauren, this is the first time I'm sharing this with you. Uh, my organization has had to do four amendments in the last month to raise our room block. And we are in uncharted territory in room reservations that we've never had. Um, so maybe okay. this will also happen for Nevis Outreach. I hope so. It'll be well. Um, how about anyone else? Any questions about or comments about anything else? Um, again, research, the registry, uh, advocacy, whatever it might be. No. I have a question. So um, obviously we just gave you the lay of the land for our goals and it is ambitious and we gave you different ways you can get involved. But one of my challenge, one of my biggest challenges is um, how do we ease the pathway for people? So 
how do we do you feel like one on one conversations need to happen to to ascertain what those goals are from that from that individual person and how they're going to get involved? Um, I'm just trying to navigate like especially the, I feel like the grassroots fundraisers are probably where we have the most potential um, in people in getting people to kind of do something in their community that moves that needle for us a little bit. But I also want to make sure that we're giving people the right tools and resources and language to make them feel like that that's possible for them. Um, if if you were going to host a fundraiser in your community, what tools and resources would you feel like you would need to make something like that happen? I'm just trying to make sure that my toolkit is robust enough to achieve the goal that we have set out. On. And I will say, um, while you're thinking on that, your answer could be as simple as, well, I need Lauren Isbell to be at my grassroots fundraiser. Mm -hmm. um, it could be that we're not asking you all to necessarily ask. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're going to be asking our community um, who they know and who they think we should then be following up with. Um, so we don't want, I mean, yes, we want everyone to play their part, but we don't want this to be intimidating or scary. Right. So like, and I know anytime you're raising money, it, some people are like, Oh, I don't want to do that. But like, um, just trying to think about com the way we can work conversations, the things we could have in our, tool, um, our toolkit to help move forward. Lisa says, as far as fundraising, do we have a platform for social networking that people can share to fundraise? So nonprofits, Facebook and raise quite a bit that way. Yes. So we do have an ability to design like custom pages that can be shared on social media. Um, and um, Meta, the Facebook platform has changed a lot of regulations on what who can fundraise <laughs> on, on that platform. Um, so that we have done that in the past um, and that's not something we currently have access to for a variety of reasons and it's a constant headache. <laughs> However, um, we can do like a social media, like a design your page. So like that, that's how Kara did her fundraiser for her little girl. Like she sent me pictures and what she wanted it to say and we made the link and then she just shared that out on social media. Um, hey, um, I'm Weston's mom. I just want to have a question really quick. Yeah. Um, for, so we're, for his first birthday, we're doing a fundraiser. Um, I have a local friend that actually owns a sticker shop. And so she's going to print off a couple of stickers. Um, and then that's what they'll receive as a like, thank you for donating. Um, I have filled out the form online on that little um, link that you sent out on accident. Yes, yes, I got it. Um, I sent that out or I filled it out. Um, so my question is like, who do I talk to for that? Cause I, before this, when I did the um, social media um, takeover, mm -hmm. I, was, I, believe I was talking to Stephanie. I don't think I've seen her yet this conference. Maybe I have, I don't know if I've seen no, her she, She's actually on vacation, but she's my assistant and she's wonderful. Okay. <laughs> um, I just wanted to know like, um, so my, the friend that's doing the stickers, they, she was able to take the, um, the logo, the mm -hmm. new, the new Nevis logo. And my husband was like, you know, are we allowed to do that? Because, you know, they're, they're tasteful. They're little Highland cows. Cause my son has a Highland cow kind of lick <laughs> with his Nevis hair. Um, but so one of my questions is, is that okay? And like, who do I talk to, to kind of, uh, kind of set everything in stone? Cause I want to get this kind of rolling and then put on his social media to kind of stir up more attention for that. Um, yeah. So um you're in the right place. <laughs> and <laughs> talking talking with me or Stephanie is perfectly fine. And using the logo is fine. We uh the gray family that they did their motorcycle rally a couple weeks ago, they wanted a big banner with it on it. We we made a banner, sent it to them. Like whatever but, tools you need to um to do your fundraiser successfully, that's that's the least we can, you know, as long as it's within yeah. reason, obviously. You know what I mean? But yeah. um any reasonable um, thing like that that we would need to to help uh, move your fundraiser forward? Absolutely. Um, and 
I'll be, I'll, I'll be sure to follow up. Um, I have your email on that form and um, <laughs> by, by Monday, Tuesday at the latest, you'll have an email with a whole link to some resources that you can use to plan your fundraiser. Or if you already, sounds like you already kind of know what you're doing and just need our help, but happy to help however we can. All right. Thank you. No problem. And thank you so much for being willing to fundraise on our behalf. We sure appreciate it. Um, as you can see, we've got some big goals and it takes every person just doing what they, whether it's selling cow stickers or uh, somebody the other day was like, I think I'm going to have a hot dog eating contest. And I said, if that's what you want to do for New Outreach, a hot dog eating contest next 4th of July, I'm all for it. So, if, well, if they don't do it on the 4th of July, maybe they can get Joey Chestnut to come to their event and then uh -huh. they would raise a lot more money. Okay. <laughs> Okay. But yeah. on the 4th of July, I think he's busy. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, plan an alter, maybe do the 1st of July since that's Nevis Outreach's birthday, right? Maybe a few days ahead. Um, my, um, I'm talking with my dad. He uh, is really involved with NASCAR and we're trying to figure out like some kind of like NASCAR watching party or something for next year for some of the races or something like um, I don't know, maybe something. He has a whole group of people that they get together and they're actually in Virginia, wherever they are right now racing. Um, I don't know. I don't follow NASCAR, but, um, <laughs> maybe Martinsville. I don't know. Um, yeah. somewhere in Virginia at a NASCAR. Yeah, probably so, um, anyway, we'll see, you know, uh, but I mean, it really is just a matter of figuring out what people, you know, have what communities they have access to, and um, utilizing that for um, for the cause. But if you have any suggestions on just resources that we feel, feel like would be helpful, um, I know with a new logo, like some things that we're working on are like making sure people have like a thank you card set that has the Nevis logo on it that they could send out with to, for thank yous and things like that if they want. So um, those are some of the things that we have in the works, but just trying to make sure we don't miss anything because we haven't really done anything to this degree before. So I kind of want to have, um, that's why in talking with uh, Maggie and the cars, they're going to try to do one here pretty shortly to help me work out the kinks. I said, do an early one for me so that I can run it with you guys and see how it goes. And, you know, um, rep repeat, 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 rinse and repeat, but get better every time. Well, and, and to that, I would say, again, we're going to make mistakes here. Um, Yes, we're trying to be a more robust organization, but we're still basically a grassroots, you know, small nonprofit. Um, and so, you know, we're going to do things that a small nonprofit does well, and sometimes things that maybe they don't do well. Um, so be patient with us. Keep giving us ideas. But yeah, things like sharing the logo and stuff like that, I think we're very open to that. Um, so, yeah. Absolutely. And I think we have, what, like four minutes left on this session, but we're just yeah. extending into the close, right? So same call. Like yeah. two slides left. <laughs> Lizzie. All right, well, let's go ahead and bring them up. I don't know. Or let Lizzie talk. Okay. Yeah. On birthdays. So the actual fundraiser that's linked through Facebook, we do not have access to at this time. Where you could like, where Facebook would automatically pull it up. Um, and it has to do with laws that changed with the California Franchise Tax Board. You have to basically have a license to fundraise in California, but you, you're not required to get a license unless you raise a million dollars in fundraising. So um, it's just kind of one of those spots where, and we filed an application, but they said they're behind because of COVID and it could take a year to get approved. And so that's my, that's the story, but it, it changed, the laws changed in California in um, January of this year. So, and that was a significant amount of fundraising for um, Nevis Outreach. I mean, some months um, was as much as four or $5,000 a month that would come in through Facebook fundraisers. So we are feeling that for sure. Um, so, we're, but we are going to try to do a better job of saying, hey, we can create a page for you, for your, you know, for your, for your birthday or for your network or whatever. But of course, then you run into the Facebook algorithm doesn't like outside links as much. So they're not going to promote, you know, it's they choose what to promote. So it is a little bit of a challenge, but not insurmountable, just an extra step. Lauren, the question in the chat was whether we can um, like share the address for sending donations and things like that versus yeah. directly doing it to Facebook, but, you know, things like that that people can do 
for on their Facebook. Yes, there is a website address that can be shared um, directly and those custom pages are a website. So you can use that link and we can even shorten it for you where it's not, you know, like all these characters, really long address. Um, we can even shorten it. We can make a QR code. I mean, there's a hundred ways we can um, share it shortly and succinctly. So, um, and and anything relate um, directly to um, nevis.org slash donate. And that's, that's one reason why we're being very articulate with how we roll our new website out, because all that stuff is connected to the back end of our existing website. Um, that and like the contact us forms that Rita gets for um, like the neat requests and our, um, e even my email, even all of our organizational emails are all connected to the website. So we're trying to just make sure that all that gets rolled over um, really just, you know, do it right, <laughs> connect it, connect all the dots correctly so that we don't, when we make, when we make that transition from the existing nevis.org to the new one, um, that it all goes with it. So, and I'm really excited about the new site. It is absolutely beautiful. So. When does the new site launch? Um, our expected launch date is now you know, it could vary by a few days. So I'm a little hesitant to say an actual day, but our like go live date as of this moment is August the 21st. Ah, there you go. So about a month away. And the design is pretty well done. And we've got to do some copy editing um, and a few little tweaks and then all the back end stuff. That's kind of where we are. But if you didn't okay. have, yeah, you can go in the additional materials and go to board packet and go to my report. And in that report, there is a slide that links to the like beta site where you can you can view it and look around. So it's pretty cool. Not every awesome. single feature on the on the site works on the beta, but most of them do. Interesting. Yeah, it's really exciting. I was gonna try to I was gonna try to share. I wanted to share it so bad in person in the board meeting the other night, but it. My, my computer couldn't do the beta and the Zoom and all the videos all at the same time. It was like crashing. Were you like maybe the internet issues? Yeah. <laughs> um, so any other, why you got another question? You look like you're about to say something. No, I was just gonna say if we had two more slides or if those are the closing slides. They are the closing slides. That's what I thought. Okay, so we can just, if there's any other comments or questions, we can keep going, sure. So um, our closing slides are, um, we just want to thank everybody for coming. Uh, this has been um, a great uh, time together for us to just reflect on um, where we are as an organization, where we're going and everything in between and um, all those pieces that are core to our mission. Um, the uh, recordings will all be available. Um, at the close of the conference and they'll be here for 30 days and then they'll slowly make ourselves way over to the, our YouTube channel uh, where they will live in the archives and then we will pull different sessions and link them um, in categories on our new website when that when that gets up in August and maybe it'll be there on launch day but um, this has just um, been a great reflection of um, really our, our community and I, it's really cool how like the new, the new logo talks, you know, the story of that community and how we're all together and then to see it um, play out in, in a virtual experience like this and reach people that may never have the opportunity to join us in person. And then um, just thinking about um, being together uh, next year in St. Louis. So we will uh, be in St. Louis July 8th through the 10th in, 20, at, in 2024, so next summer, uh, with optional social events on the 7th and the 11th. This is a new schedule. We've never done a Monday through Wednesday um, option before, but we're going to give it a go. And um, there has been requests for extra social time. A lot of times when you get into the meat of the conference, the 7th through the 10th, you're just running session to session to session. And, you know, there's a little bit of time at dinner time, but there's not a whole lot of social time in that conference if you're in sessions. And so um, trying to create those opportunities 
um, on the 7th and the 11th. And we, we don't know exactly what the 7th is going to look like yet, but we know we will be at the zoo altogether. One of the, the St. Louis Zoo is one of the best in the country and it's free. <laughs> And uh, we'll be we'll be going there on July the seventh. So we're going to start thinking now about good weather and that it's not too hot. And Lisa, you had a question. Do we know if we still, um, if we still do the groups like the? Yes. So we will always do the NCM group and the parent groups um, at our in person conferences, Lisa. And another piece is uh, we are hoping that. Uh, Whitney, our director of membership and metrics, who has supported this virtual conference, her and Lily put this whole thing together practically. And um, they, so we hope our next kind of charge to her is to figure out what support groups we need and what does that look like and recruit volunteers to um, run maybe a monthly, quarterly, whatever cadence we feel is necessary, that group feels is necessary for um, new parents and also um, NCM groups that are, that are resource, that will, be, that will become support groups that maybe you could participate in on a quarterly basis online and then meet again in person at our in-person conferences. So um, thank you for that. And that's good feedback. If you would like to see the parents and the NCM groups uh, in the virtual setting for next time, um, that's that's something we didn't have in the schedule this year. But um, I think and somebody else asked about the grandparents group. So we may want to consider um, adding, you know, maybe some programming during the day, Saturday morning that would that would add those support groups in. So and I will add to that, um, you know, we're constantly learning and um, the, you know, the uh, virtual two years ago um, was the span of several weeks long, and we were trying to do this in a, in a condensed version. Um, the flip side is, I think last year at our in-person conference, we condensed some things down, and we heard from people that, no, we really need to take some more time. And so that's why you see a, a full three days with a, a shoulder day, for the lack of a better term, a pre-day and a post-day, let's say it that way, um, mm -hmm. because I think really people want to have that um, and make sure that we are able to have all of those subgroups, um, geographic, regional, demographic, whatever, um, as part of the conference. And, and then we're still going to be trying to figure out how I think the world is trying to figure this out. You know, Zoom is here to stay, but what does it mean and how do you treat it differently now that the pandemic is over? Um, is a question. And, and I've said to Lauren, for example, and, and I think hopefully we're going to figure this out. Obviously, y'all registered. I'm sure you weren't able to get to every session. I wasn't. But we'll have a month to be able to look at those. Um, and I think if we can figure something out, one of the ideas that I had was, do we have an opportunity to allow people who missed it entirely, who now hear, oh, wait, there was some good stuff. Um, can they pay, you know, $25, 50 bucks, whatever it is. Um, and we give them access to all the recordings over the next 30 days. Uh, so if there are people that you think may have missed it, that would be benefit. Um, I would say have them reach out to Lauren. Yeah. And thank you for how I love the virtual and see Andrew last time. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Um, live stream it. Yes. Um, a hybrid event is something that we've tossed around, Lizzie. Um, and um, yes, Fletcher's mom has already volunteered to do an NCM, um, uh, some be involved somehow. And uh, she's already on another committee. So I'm hoping we can get with her and articulate um, exactly what that looks like. I don't know if that, um, do you guys have any feedback? Would you like to meet monthly? Do you feel like quarterly is sufficient every other month? I have no idea what the cadence would be. We haven't decided yet. Do you have a do you have a strong preference one way or the other? I think every other month or quarterly would probably be good, but uh, I agree quarterly definitely because I I mean I don't know about Fletcher, but I know for us, um, my son has like a lot of different therapies and um, you know, life kind of gets in the way. So quarterly is probably perfect. Okay. Thank you for that feedback. We will, I will absolutely, we'll make that, I mean, that is our top priority post-conference. September, October is to wrap our arms around those, the demand for those groups. And we don't want to try to force demand where there's not any, like 
I mean, I don't know if we could get Nevis dads on a call um, every quarter or not. That might prove a little difficult. I don't know if the demand is there, but if there was, then we would try to meet it. So um, definitely a survey going out to our membership and um, figuring out what those um, groups are and then facilitating that. And especially, yes, Lisa, she says she's busy with therapy too. So that's perfect. Um, thank you guys for feeding, for giving us that feedback. And I, and I will make the NCM group, um, our top priority, especially since I know you guys are interested. Um, maybe we could do a first meeting like August, September. That'd be great. Thank you so much. Um, so um uh would we would we be meeting starting this fall or um so the ncm group would probably start meeting this fall like like in a few weeks <laughs> august september and um as far as like regional meetups and things like that um we'll just really have to see what, how the next few weeks play out in terms of commitments from fundraising and see what those things look like and see how much staff time we have to possibly plan some meetups and things like that. But maybe we can do, maybe they could be one and the same. Maybe we plan some families are interested in meeting up with others for a fundraiser or something like that. Or, um, I know they've done, I know they've done that in the past. So, um, we'll see, uh, how that unfolds, but um, definitely in our long range plans is to make those regional meetups um, something that the staff of Nevis Outreach drives just so that it's consistent. And when you come to a Nevis Outreach event, you know you've came to a Nevis Outreach event. And um, we just want to make sure that they're at the caliber that we would want them to be organizationally. Do you feel like that's that's a fair assessment, Wyatt? <laughs> And, and I know real quick, Lizzie uh, asked a question about live streaming with the conference. It is something that we will look at. Um, again, I have some history on this. Um, the advantages our conference hotel does not require us to use Encore, which is like the industry company for AV. And when you're doing things that are live stream, it, the costs can get really difficult. Um, but, you know, maybe there's one or two sessions that we're able to do that with. And our, there's also an opportunity to record some sessions and offer a virtual conference experience for people who couldn't be there in person after the fact. Um, but I would say it's always a challenge. Um, we'd love to have as many people there in person as we possibly can. And sometimes when you offer the virtual live stream option, it takes away people's uh, desire to be there in person. So we'll, we'll have to carefully balance all of it. Any other questions? Were any of the speakers Zoomed or Skyped into the conference in Denver last year? Yes, we did have a virtual um, speaker, um, Dr. Sargent, who was on our experts panel today from the National Institutes of Health. He was a virtual um, speaker on Zoom, but I think that's the only one that we brought in. And that was just because, um, well, a, what he had to say was really important about the, uh, right. the my part. We only had that one. Yeah. Yeah. And he, yeah, and he, I mean, ideally, here's the other thing I, I, on the flip on conference. The worst thing in my in my conference experience world is, hey, I just went into a ballroom with 100 other people to watch someone speak to me on a screen. Um, the, again, we would want just like we want you all to be there in person. I think we want our speakers to be there in person as well, if at all possible. Yeah, we even tried to balance that this evening or the, during this conference. We didn't want there periodically there was a session that needed to be pre-recorded and played, but by and large, we want to be able to engage with you guys in real time. So it's part of the benefit. So any other questions? Okay. Any closing remarks? Okay. Wrap up? I do. Um, I want to once again, um, on behalf of the board, thank the folks who helped put all of this together. Uh, Lauren and her team, I know Lily and Whitney really were working on this for months. Um, again, it, it is, it sometimes seems really simple to just turn on Zoom. It's not. Um, and there was a lot of effort put into 
the thought process of how the conference fit, what the options were. Um, and I think it's really important that we all say thank you to them. I think Lily might still be somewhere lurking here. Um, and if you get a chance to send them an email or a little, you know, Facebook notice, please do. Um, and then I think the only other thing I have is to remind everyone that the auction is still live for another 45 minutes. So go so, out and get the money. <laughs> if you're outbidding, whoever there might be to outbid. <laughs> Happy outbidding. <laughs> 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 um okay well um i think that's a wrap and um again thank you all we wouldn't be here without you and we just appreciate your support and we're so thankful and yes lily and uh whitney um i don't even want to tabulate the hours it is a lot um that they have spent to um put this together and uh i feel like it's been a top-notch experience gone really smoothly and I'm really thankful and they've done a fab fabulous job and um they have made it really easy for me this last year I was buried in all things virtual conference and um they you can tell that we've had people uh, it's just been an elevated experience we've had people that um this was their core uh take it and take it and run with it is what I told Whitney so and she, that she did and it's been fantastic and I just I know she can um she will appreciate, she'll be humble about our accolades, but I'd certainly, um, certainly want to make sure that credit is given where credit is due. <laughs> so thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, Good to see Lauren. everybody. Bye. Good to see you, we'll see you all in St. Louis. Yes, see you in see all St. Louis next year. All right. Yes. Bye. Okay, bye. Bye. Bye.